Hello. 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 Hello.
looks like it's time for us to begin. So let's start with where we left off last time. So if you remember last time, what we were doing was we was uh, we were uh, looking at excuse me we were working in position dot hs and we had created these definitions of is winning and something is off right um, I think that should. I don't know why I'm creating any code, but anyway. So last time we were looking at this is winning and is losing function, and we were trying to look at uh, how to evaluate any position in the game tree as a losing or a winning position. So we want to improve that in two ways. One thing is that um, this function is going to recursively call itself on positions it has seen before. I think it's fine in this case, but in many cases, let's say if the game tree is large or something, we want to have, uh, we want to be able to cache those results in the sense if we have evaluated some position before, we should we should be able to look that up. And the other thing is that when we are choosing our best responses or our best strategy, we want to be able to, if there are two ways to win, we want to choose the way. Uh, choose the strategy which will uh, let us win in lesser number of steps. So we will uh, address these things now. So one of the things I'm going to do is I am going to use the state monad which we talked about a few lectures ago. And the idea would be that when we do this computation of uh, trying to evaluate a particular position, we will be looking it up in the current state. So I'm going to try to import uh, control.monad.state. And I think that's not going to work because I need to put MPL in my dependencies list. So let's do that and I think I also want to do that here. Okay, it didn't take much time to compile, that's good. So the other thing I will need to do is I will define this type called score and a score is going to be a label together with a height. Uh, and the label is either win, lose, or draw. And this height is basically how far away it is from the terminal nodes. So if you have already won, the height is zero. But if you can win in one step, then the height is one. And I'm calling this quantity score. So now I want to be able to uh, think of certain scores as superior and certain scores as worse of for our uh, purposes. So I'm going to impose an ordering on them. I could have done this some other way by uh, maybe by directly working with those things, but um, since I can define orderings on arbitrary things, I will do, I will do it that way. So there are many cases over here. So actually, let's look at the, uh, let's ask GHCI for information about, or let's increase the, okay. Uh, okay. So yeah, let's ask for information about ORD and what it tells us is that the class ORD has uh, requires EQ. So if I want to define something as ORD, I want to have EQ first, and we have already done deriving EQ, but we can't do deriving ORD because the ordering we want is a little bit uh, special. We can't hope that the compiler 
understands it without any help. So we are going to define the order manually. And it says that uh, if you want to define ORD, a minimal complete, like there are a lot of things in this class, in this type class, the minimal complete definition is either you define how to do this or how to do that. So I could either given two things, I could either produce or an ordering. An ordering is basically an element of uh, an element like this. So it's I given two things, either it's like LT, which means like this thing is lesser or it's greater than or both things are equal. So I can either do that or I can uh, just define this function, which is of type a arrow, a arrow bool. So I'm going to do that. So uh, let's do the easy things first. So if I have, if I have two positions or rather two scores and in one of which I win in I steps and in another I win in J steps. I would consider this one better because if I can win in a smaller number of steps, that's good for me. So I'm going to say this over here. So to compare these two things, I need to uh, compare the same things on the argument, but in the opposite way. And if I have score, uh, if I have a win, and I'm trying to compare that with something else. So this J would, this win J would catch any kind of win, but the other possibility is that it's not, it's either a lose or a draw. So this is definitely going to be false because I'm going to think of uh, win as the best, as the most superior score. And if I have score lose in i steps and i lose in j steps i'm going to think of losing in more steps as a better option than losing in a smaller number of steps and similarly if it is not uh, if i'm my current score is lose and anything which is not lose then that is better. And I also want to define some ordering on the draw states, like the draw scores. But um, so two of these things are obvious because uh, it's better to win than to have get a draw. And it's better to, uh, it's worse to lose than to get a draw. And I'm going to insert one more thing. And actually this is more of an arbitrary choice that given two scenarios in which I draw, I am going to, I want to draw in lesser number of steps. This is more of an arbitrary thing. I don't think uh, this is very useful for us. So I'm going to have this uh, ordering on these score objects. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to define a type, which I'm going to call knowledge base. And the idea is that this is sort of the uh, positions which we have already evaluated before. So let me try to load that and let's see what errors I get. Yeah, so I need to be able to so I don't need this for now. So I'm importing map like before. Now it should work. Okay. So now I'm going to define the functions I care about. The first function is going to be of this type, given a position, I want to be able to think, uh, do this. So let's leave it undefined for now. Uh, and then there is the best response 
which given a position it will find a successor position which is the best response for that particular current player at that position so you could actually think of this particular thing uh, we have talked about this before but maybe not in as much detail as i would like to have so you could think of this particular uh, type in the sense of the following and actually it is pretty much like that except that we are writing it in a slightly more fancy way you can think of it in this manner so what is happening over here is that we are assuming that we are given some knowledge base and we do some evaluation and when we do that evaluation in the process we look up we try to evaluate more positions and then we are going to be when we do that when we will insert those things which we looked up in our way and we will put them back in the map so that later when we try to do that we will we will be reusing the knowledge that we generated does this make sense any questions okay so let's let me try to uh, define this so i will be given some position let's call that position pause with a board b and a current player p so okay so what i am going to do now is i am going to consider all the next positions and remember from last lecture that we had defined the successor positions which given a position produces all its successors and the position our current position is pause so we produce all the successor positions and i also want to produce all the scores so i'm going to do uh next scores and what are what are the scores of our okay. yeah i should i was going to like uh, consider the next scores of all the successors but i realized that uh, i should really start with uh, defining the base case so actually let me do that so the base case is um simple so i have this position this position let's ignore this part for now so in this position i try to look up what is the board winner and remember that what it does is it goes through every like all the lines and sees if there is a winner and if it finds some winner it tells us that just x is winner or just o is winner or something like that and there is a possibility that uh the winner is nothing so look at this patterns these patterns are not exhaustive so one possibility is that the winner is the current player and the other possibility uh is that there is so if this does not match but this matches that means that there is a winner but it is not the current player and the other possibility that we are looking at is that all the squares in the board have been filled so notice that these guards are not exhaustive in the sense that if it was the case that uh, there is no winner currently but not all the squares in the board have been filled we are going to get nothing and we are not matching nothing with one of our guards so i am going to so it is possible that this all of these things like none of them go through so i am going to define that next so actually that is the more interesting scenario the scenario where we are not at a terminal but uh, before that let's like look at this one more time carefully so all these cases are what i call terminal nodes in the game tree so if i have found a winner then the score that i find that the score that i am supposed to report is that the i have one and that is the score and i am calling pure over here because it's inside the 
inside the state monad because um, i'm not just reporting a score i'm also supposed to uh, possibly touch this knowledge base in order to update it or something and similarly for the other cases right so now we are going to look at the other possibility where there is no winner and it is not the case that all the squares are full so this case is going to be more interesting so what we are going to do is we are going to look at the state um so actually let's look at some of the things in the control uh, in the state monad library So there is this function called get and the, okay, the signature is not very helpful, but the idea is that if you do get, uh, let me actually write that in a comment, maybe it will be useful for us. So what get does, get gives you current state. There is another function which is kind of useful it's called gets i for the lack of a better word i guess so what get get if does you is like it it gives you the current state but it like looks at it through a particular uh, particular lens which is if here if is just a function takes the current state current state let's call the current state is and then it gives you the office. Okay. And remember that in the state monad, there was this thing called put and put S would be replace the current state by S. Actually, there is a slightly more useful thing, which we will use here is modify and modify if is it does this. Let's say that the current state is S. Then it applies if on the current state. Right? So these are the main things we need to, this is sort of the API of this uh, state monad, we, which we want to be able to use to uh, which we want to use in this case. And what are the useful things in the map library? So there is a very useful thing. Remember that knowledge base is maps, a map from position to score. So there is a function called map, uh, called lookup. And given a key and a map, it tries to look up that particular value in the map. This is very much like the lookup in the list, but it does this over this map rather than the list. So I have a map and that is my state. What do I want to do from the map? Um, what do I want to do from the map? I want to look at it through this lens of lookup. I'm going to say map dot lookup position. Uh, maybe calling this value knowledge is not a good idea. Or, uh, what should I say? Score, maybe. Um, so this is a score. Actually, really, this is a maybe score because it, this particular value may or may not be there in the current map. So I need to do a case split on that. So case score of, if it is indeed a score, maybe the score is some, uh, what is a good uh, name for this? Uh, let's call this score maybe. If the score is, score maybe is actually a score then we don't need to do any work. We can just return the score that we found. But if it is, we our lookup failed, 
then it's more interesting. We need to compute this. And as we compute it, we want to, we will be looking up, we will be recursively calling this score function again and again. For example, in the case of like, uh, when we were doing it with this, we were recursively calling is winning and is losing. So when I do that, I don't want to lose those results. I want to store those results. So, um, let's try to do that. So first I want to, uh, define, I want to define this thing called next positions, which is the successor of all the positions I am, I care about, uh, all the, posi uh, all the successor positions of the current position. Oh, should call this P. Oh, no, I should call this pause because this entire thing is called pause. Yes. Um, so, uh, actually here I should pause and introduce an interesting function, which is going to come from control.monad. And what this function does, it's the name of this function is called map. So it's very much like map, but it's map in a monadic context. So let's say I have several different uh, actions. I will do those actions and I get one result from each and, and I will collect all those results. What is a good example? Uh, let's try to find an example. So So think of traversable as lists. So I have a list of actions and for each of these actions, I am doing something. Mm. So let's see. So uh, let me So I have this function, which I'm going to define, which is, I'm going to call capitalize and oh. so I have this function called capitalize like from a few lectures ago and what capitalize does is it capitalizes things. So I have Let's see the type of map M again. So let's say I have this function which does this. Given some X, it returns capitalize. And let's say that I want, I have I have get line two times. And if I map this on this, how will that work? Um, what? Um, yeah, I'm not explaining this very well. Mind. So the idea is that if you have two get lines, the type of that is, I, the type of that is IO list of string, but if you wanted to like collapse this further and you wanted something like, uh, two IO strings, then you would use something like this. So that is 
what I am going to do, which kind of like that, except it's a written in a slightly more compact way. But think of this as something like this, that it uh, does the first effect and it does the second effect and it collects the results. So that is what MapM does basically. I wanted to think of an example, but I can't think of a simple example right now. So the idea is that I have next position, next positions, and the type of this is basically a position, right? And the type of this, I don't have to write the types, but I'm just writing this for convenience to understand how this works. The type of this is state knowledge base score. So I want to be able to map each of these things. If I did just map, then the type of this thing would be, uh, it would be the type of this whole thing would have been state knowledge base score, but like a list of those things, because for each position, I get one of these things. But it's kind of convenient to have something like this instead. So that's why I'm going to use MapM. It's, it's MapM is basically a sequence and I, I do a map and then I do sequence. Actually, let me not use MapM and just use sequence. Sorry about the confusion. So this should give me something like this. I will remove these type signatures, I guess. So the way to think about what is happening over here is that I have a bunch of I have a bunch of scores, which is what I'm going to get. Uh, but I am not computing this scores in a pure manner. I'm doing some kind of side effect while computing this course. And what is the side effect? The side effect is that the state we are in, we are going inside that state and we are going to modify that. And we have not completed this particular function, but let's do that. And then it will be clear that uh, we are going inside this thing and modifying the particular state. So, so these are all the scores, uh, you know, I want to call it, call this next scores. So what is the best score over here? And for this, I can just use this function called minimum. And what does minimum do? It takes a list of elements and it basically does the minimum in one like that. It It's basically like does a linear scan and figures out what is the minimum, right? And what is the type of this? The type of this is that these elements should be orderable, the elements on which I'm trying to apply the minimum function. And are they orderable? Yes, that is exactly what we did over here. We we figured out a way to compare these scores. So what is going to be the best of these scores? It's going to be minimum next scores. So what I'm doing is I have this game tree over here and I am, I have all these successors. I'm computing the scores for each of these successors and I'm taking their minimum. So why am I taking their minimum? Because, uh, my opponent wants to pick a score, which is going to be the best for him, but I want to give as less of an opportunity to my opponent as possible. And that is the branch in this tree, which I'm going to choose. So, which is why I am uh, looking at each of these scores and I am picking their minimum. Does this make sense? Any questions about this? So this is very much like last time when we were uh, looking at is winning is losing. What, what I was doing is I was computing the successors and then I was picking the losing position. And this is kind of like picking the losing position, except that like we are, uh, our uh, ordering is more granular here. So that, that's what we are doing over here. And so 
if the minimum score we pick the minimum score over there and then i define this current score uh, based on the successor score so here i am going to define this function called car score and it's a very simple function it basically tells me how to compute the minimum score based on uh, uh, how to compute the compute my score based on the minimum score of my successors so if if i if my successor would lose in i turns then that mean that basically means i'm going to win in i plus 1 turns because i'm just one step away from moving there and it's just one uh, and similarly these are the other steps right so i i think this is not a very good name curve score but um that's what i'm going to go with for now and so we did we we could just return this over here but there is one thing missing which is that over here i did nothing to update the knowledge base and what i'm going to do is just that i'm going to modify the knowledge base so remember that there is this function modify which with which i can uh, give some modification function with with which it will update the state so what how do we want to update the state i want it's a map so i want to go into that map and basically i want to uh, insert the fact that this position has this score and that is exactly what i will do okay any questions about this one okay let's see if this is working okay so it says that if i want to use a uh, map so map is kind of a binary search tree that is its implementation so that is why when i use map it asks me that uh, this positions should be ordered and the way we have defined this right now it positions are not ordered because we neither order them manually nor we derive so i'm going to just ask the compiler to automatically derive some kind of ordering for position so that it can effectively create a map in which the values are positions okay so now it says that i can't derive this because derive this ord because it this what does this position contain it contains two things one is the board and another is the player but i would probably want to use the dictionary order and want to use the ordering of boards but boards are not ordered uh so i'm going to just go ahead and ask the compiler to figure out some way to order boards so it's going to say that okay in order to make sense of how boards are ordered i want to know how players are ordered and i'm going to add an ordering to the players over here and okay now now it works so at this point i should add some tests i believe so i'm going to copy over a bunch of tests and just hope that they work so remember that we had all these uh all these uh positions like there was this all x board which was filled with x and if i try to score that i i would i should get score win and we it's a win in zero steps if the current player is x if the current player is o then it's a lose in zero steps and then there is a draw board but it's not a draw board with let's see if i can load this out okay. so i need to import certain things you know what let's uh, save some time and copy all the imports because i think we will need them at some point so oh okay.
so for some reason the testing thing has not seen the definitions of oh because i didn't import position right that makes a lot of sense oh no sorry this is the wrong file Let me do a stack build and then maybe the test file will see the. So there was a board which I called draw board and it doesn't have all the squares filled, but in at most four steps, all the squares will be filled and there are four squares. So it's easy to see. And if I if this thing is correct, then there should be a draw in four steps. And there were a few other examples. Like for example, there was export two, which had this four click thing. So if it is a move for O right now, O will lose in two steps no matter what. Or rather, uh, I mean, if X plays intelligently, then O should lose in two steps. So these are some of the tests. So let me go out and run stack test and that should work hopefully. Yeah, that's good. So now the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a way to uh, figure out what is the best response. Like what should be the next uh, yeah what should be the next move so i will again say that the position give the position some name and then i will do the following so i will con compute the all the next positions and then I need to figure out what the next scores are and remember this particular function from last time. Basically, I'm going to compute the score for each of these things. And so I have this list of positions and for each of them, I'm going to compute a list of scores. So if I consider this particular function, actually, I, I don't know if this is the best way to write this, but uh, I couldn't figure out a better way. So if I consider this, this is like a list of scores along with the positions because uh, you get it right. Uh, so this is like position P1, P2, P3. And I have a score S1, S2, S3. So when I zip them, I see both of them together. And I am going to import this function from data.list called minimum by and basically with minimum by if you it basically is like a minimum except that it looks at a particular uh, function to compute the minimum so let's see so i want the best successor because that's what i want to figure out what is the best successor the best success to figure out the best successor, I find this like zip, may make the zip list, and then I take the minimum. But I don't just want to get the minimum of the scores, I want to consider the minimum of these uh, positions based on the value of the scores. So that's why I'm going to use this function called minimum by. And what I'm going to get from this zip list is something like this. Uh, a score and a position and let's say another score and a position and i'm going to compare these on the basis of the scores so this thing would ultimately give me a score and a position pair and what i want to get from that is not the score but the position really so i'm going to take the second element of that tuple and basically i'm going to return um actually i should have written this a bit more carefully because i'm kind of assuming that this 
list is non empty which it may not be if this we if we are at a draw um, so yeah i should fix that sometime and does this work one plus parent okay mm. So I have a bunch of more tests. I'm going to add them here. And I, what I'm testing over, oh, I forgot to add the, add these tests to the main function. So what I'm testing over here is that the best response makes sense, for example. so. If you have ever really played this game on pen and paper, then you know that when your opponent makes a partial line, what you do is you put your thing to block it. So for example, if I have two vertical X, which is this position, the best response should be, uh, and the current player is uh, O, then what, I would expect O to do is I should expect O to go here and fill in with O and indeed it, what, that is what it does which is what I'm checking in the test yeah yeah, hmm? yeah that is true in fact, yeah I had some tastes based on that. <laughs> so it, this would be something like that. Um, but I, I think as far, as far as this test is concerned, this is a good test, um, at least a semi good test. So, and the other, so that is what O would do if O was playing and if X was playing, X would just go in here and fill it up. Thank you. Um, anyone wants to ask anything? So if not, I think at this point we have all the ingredients and what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and define a UI. So this is going to be interesting. I'm going to call this gloss UI because this is the library that we are going to use and I will show you some more details in a moment. So in order to do this, we will need a library called gloss. And to be fair, it's not really a graphical user interface library. It's more of a vector graphics library, but I think we should be fine. So let's do stack build in order to get gloss. I have added this gloss thing over here. So There are some interesting ideas over here, which I will explain. Before that, let me do a little bit of setup in order to get the things that we want. Yeah, this will take some time. In the meantime, let me uh, introduce to you a few interesting concepts which we will need. So let's try to think of how the game uh, will actually work. So this is, what I call a game loop. Actually, this diagram is not very good, but uh, oh. 
I hope you can sort of read this. Although the handwriting is not great, so the game sort of works like this. So there is this loop, and I start with let's say player's turn, and then I go here, and so I have two kinds of edges over here: a red edge and a green edge. So the red edges are event driven in the sense that I can go from here to here. The state of validating the input if I get some mouse click or some keyboard input or something like that. So this red edge stands for an event, and this green edge sort of stands for a software edge like which for which we don't really need to wait for anything. So I have this loop over here. So if I get some event like a key press or a mouse click or something, um. Then I go to this state and I validate player input. And if it is valid, then I go to this state. Or if not, then I wait for player's turn. I, I keep waiting until I get a valid input. So, and then I am over here, and I ask the question: Has player won? And if the player has won, then I then I basically go to another state which I have I should have written down here, which I have not. But we will do this properly when we do the code. So there is like a state over here which says game over. If the player has not won, we go to the state which is computer's turn. And in the computer's turn, what happens over here in this green edge is that the computer uh, picks a best response based on the best response function which we just defined. And then we go to has computer won. And again, we possibly go to this game over state and then. If the game is not over, then we go back to player's turn again. This concept makes sense, right? This is what I am going to call the game loop. Hmm. So I am going to start about start thinking about this uh, program by uh, trying to figure out. What the game state should be. So, I propose that the game state should be one of those things in the trunk that I call that a transition system or the game loop, like those points. The name, like we need to know what state we are in, along with two other things. Uh, one of those things is a position, because we need to know what is the who is the current player and what is the board. And we also need this knowledge base so that we don't uh, repeatedly compute. Uh... Okay, this is taking a long time. I hope we will. If if it doesn't work, I will just show you the version that I all compiled before. So. So it. So those this control state is basically what. Uh, I was showing you in the whiteboard a couple of moments ago, and along with that, I want to know what is the current state of uh, the knowledge based on like, what positions I have already evaluated, and what is really the position right now. So, and what is the control state? It's either player's turn or we are the player has already moved. In which case, we are going to ask, uh, has the player won? Or we are going to ask. Has the computer won? Oh, no. Then we are going to give the let the computer move, and then we are going to ask whether the computer has won. And then we are going to, and possibly we might enter the game over state, in which case some player has won. So actually, I am not representing the draw state in a great way. I should have. Uh, so this is going to represent whether a particular player has won or not. So this is still working, but while it does, let me show you another thing that's going to be very useful for us. So this is sort of like how we are going to think about the UI. So this particular library that we are compiling right now has this interesting function called play. 
and it has a lot of parameters, but the most important parameters are here. So it takes in a thing called world and it's, you notice that this is not a particular concrete type. Basically what that means is that this is just a name of a type variable, but instead of calling it A or B or P or Q, we're calling this world. So in our scenario, we are going to represent this world by what we, can everyone read this? Okay. So in our scenario, we are going to think of the world as the game state, which is the control state, the knowledge base and the current position. And then there is a rendering function, which is given a world. How do I, how do I show that world? And then there are two kinds of edges, the green edge and the red edge, which I was talking about. So what the, the green edges are like this, and it's saying that given a number of steps, sorry, given a amount of time that has passed, how should I update the world? And this is the amount of time that has passed. So in our thing, like we are, we don't really care about how much time has passed because it's not a physics based simulation or something. But if you were programming Mario or something, you might need that because you need to know how much time has passed. Um, the other thing is given some event, how should we respond to that event? And this is like basically like the red edges and this is the green edge. So this event, if you go here, it has like this different kind of definitions of events that some key has been pressed, some thing has been moved. Maybe the window has been moved or it has been resized and inside the key, like there is this mouse button thingy, et cetera, et cetera. And so just to recap, we have this initial state of the world, a way to render the world, a way to update the, a way to respond to events and a way to respond to time steps. And then there are some other functions, but those are not very useful for us, but, uh, we are going to be using this particular thing. So let's hope that this is compiled. Uh, oh, great. So now actually there is like a bunch of code, which I'm not going to explain because one of the things is we need to do is we need to be able to render the screen. So I copied most of that code from somewhere, but we don't really need to worry about that so much because it's a matter of understanding the understanding how to use this rendering library, but we don't the main thing I want you guys to focus on is how this loop is working and how this entire, uh, how I'm representing the whole thing. So, but let's just gloss over this thing. No pun intended. So here are some rendering details. Like I, I basically see how to, so the size is like the size of the window. I talk about how to draw the O's. I draw, talk about how to draw the extras. I talk about how to draw the board. Mm. And then there is another thing, which is basically this event handling thing, which, uh, which basically this is like the mouse coordinates, but really what I care about is the, is the uh, coordinates in terms of the board. So this is just like some function, which, uh, does that. So, uh, I think we can. We don't need to talk about that in a lot of detail, but yeah, let's try to work out the main things. So remember that one of the most, one of the things that we need to do is we need to call, we need to be able to use those things, which we have below and this is an important thing that given the game state, how do I convert it to a picture? And basically what I'm going to do over here is that if it is a game over state and, and like the player X has one, I'm going to display a board with all X's. And if it's a board with 
if the player O has one, I'm going to display a board with all those. Otherwise, I'm going to actually draw the board using this function, which I have defined below. So now comes the more interesting stuff. So let's, uh, I have this initial game state and the initial game state is, it contains the, all these things. So I'm going to start with uh, current player X. The initial board is the empty board, which we defined in the last lecture. And there is nothing in the knowledge base right now. And the control state I'm going to start in is going to be player's turn. Right. And then I have to define the green and the red edges. So that would look something like this. So I am going to define for some reason it requires us to, the library is designed so that it requires us to pass the window size around, but that's not a big deal. So given some event, I want to update the game state. That is the main thing going on here. And the event that I care about is this event that some area has been left clicked, some area called X prime, Y prime has been left clicked. And this is the thing I care the most about. And if it is some other event, I don't want to use any kind of red edge to do anything else. So if this is the case that something has been left clicked, I want to first check whether what control state I am in. So GS is the game state, right? And the game state contains these three fields. And I'm going to look at what control state I'm in. And I'm going to say, uh, if it's player's turn, then I'm going to do something interesting. If it is not the player's turn, then I don't really, I, even if the mouse is clicked, I don't care. So I'm going to keep the game straight as is. Okay. But this is the interesting stuff. So if, so if it is player's turn, then what I will do is I will try to get a new version of the board based on the following things. So I have this X prime, Y prime, but I want to convert that to, I want to convert that to the coordinates based on the, so I have to pass the, pass the size of the window for this, which I'm calling K. Maybe K is not a good name. So I am going to call that I, I comma J and at I comma J, I am going to put a mark and I'm going to take the current board or the current position and the current player is going to, because the current player is the player who is about to go, who, who will, um, who will put that mark in the position I comma J and that is what is going to be my new board. And I'm going to try to do this, but like you notice that this is in a two block. So there is a monad here and the monad is the maybe monad. So this may or may not succeed like for several reasons. One possible reason is that this coordinates, like the user may have clicked outside the board, like maybe outside the window. So in that case, we get nothing. The other possibility is that the user uh, clicked in a square, which has, which is already full in which case we should also get nothing. So actually I should do a case split over here. So is this new board really a new board? Uh, if it is not really a new board, then we do nothing with the game state. Actually, if we do nothing with the game state and we are at the control state, then it is like we are going to remain at the control state and we are going to wait for the next mouse click. Uh, otherwise it's some board B and then we want to update the game state. And let's do that. So there are a lot of things to do here. Um, well, we need to update the knowledge. So what are the things in the game state, the knowledge base, but we don't need to update the knowledge base because we didn't do any evaluations or anything. So that remains as it is, but there is this, so let's see, I think I have, I will get an indentation error or something like that. 
so yeah so i have this current position but this position should be the board should be updated with the new board which is which i have un like which i'm calling b over here and the player should become the next player so those things i have to change and then i have to move along in the game loop so now i'm calling this player's turn and the player's turn has happened so the next thing i should check is has a player won so i need to change the control state and um that's it for the that's it for the event based stages the other ages are time based ages and i'm going to so given some time pass given some time that passes i need to know how to update the game state i am not taking the particular time that has passed as an argument because here we don't really care about the time how much time has passed it just is hmm. so here we need to do a quite a bit more stuff so i need to again see check where in the control where in this that game loop we are so if it is player's turn then we shouldn't really do anything because we should wait for an event to happen so this particular function shouldn't do anything otherwise there are like lots of other possibilities and another possibility is that some particular player has won in that case we should not really do anything either because that is like a terminal state in the sense that we don't we don't uh, move away from that state ever because the game has ended um what are the other possibilities we are at the at the state where we are asking has the player won okay so in this case i need to i need to look at the current position in which is stored in the game state and ask whether the current board has a winner or not and then if the current player has a current board has current the board has a winner which is p then we basically just need to move to the control state which is, which says that the game is over and the winner is p and if the player has not won then we are going to go to we are going to allow the computer to move and similarly there is a state called has so i'm kind of writing the states out of order but um, maybe we can change that later so similarly if we are asking has the computer won or then we are doing the similar thing but if nobody has won we are just moving ahead to the player's turn in the game loop and there is another thing which is what if it is the computer's turn so in that case we need to use that best response function which we defined a while ago so there is this function called run state and maybe we should try to understand what run state does so basically what run state does is that it you give the run state a state to work with and then it produces a result and then it produces an updated state so remember a little bit ago we said that when we have something like this this is basically a shorthand for something like that so basically what is happening is that we are doing a whole bunch of computations and then our knowledge base is getting updated so we need to look at the new knowledge base and we want to store it back in the state so we are going to do this function uh, call this function which is going to figure out what the best response is and we are going to pass the current knowledge base and then it is going to tell us what is the new best response which is the new, which is a position and then we are going to get a new knowledge base which possibly contains more useful information for later and based on this we need to update the state 
and what are what we are going to do is we are going to update it as follows uh we are going to update the position to the new best position we are going to update the knowledge base based on what we have learned and then we are going to update the control state and then we are going to check whether the computer has won or not we move ahead in the game loop um so that's it now we have to uh basically use that function which we looked at like from the gloss library which is called play and basically hmm, bundle all these things together in order to make it work i don't know if it will work i'm sure we will get some errors so yeah this stuff is not super useful for us it's basically saying the background color is white um this is the initial game state and it has like all this information like we have the empty board the current player is x and the knowledge base is empty and we are asking the player to move then we describe uh, how to how to draw the game board and it's basically doing this over here like if someone has won we are going to display all x's and if o has one we have to display the lows oh i believe this is a i believe this is the number of uh, times a second this particular game time thing is called maybe one is will make the game kind of slow let's make this four and here i am basically calling the game time function and i am basically ignoring the argument t that's why i have written it in this manner uh so that's it i think let's try to run this actually i wanted to do two versions of this uh, particular thing one cli uh, interface and one gui but i think we have only time for one so i went with this one because Fifty-five. But this is inside the do block, so it's a problem. Ah, uh, I might as well copy this from my other thing, which I know it has compiled. Okay, that build. So, huh? oh, so yeah, we have not linked th things correctly. So here in this is the main thing that is executed, and it is just some random thing which just prints something called some fun. I don't know why. so we are going to import gloss ui and we are going to say the main is gloss ui dot main hopefully that will work um getting some random errors um let me just call this something um C 
she had wins right so uh, that makes sense any questions we finish just in time so good question let's see so this is 47 let's round that up to 50 50 uh 130 180 uh 180 and then 180 plus 160 that's how much 340 let's say 350 yeah uh yeah like there is one of the things about this is that libraries like this i suspect are far more accessible yeah so anyone wants to say anything people on zoom there are like eight people on zoom right now maybe seven well if not then we should wrap up Maybe Korti will have something to say. Thank you for coming to the lectures. Yeah, so uh, and Michelle and I get together uh, this afternoon to put together these sample findings. My recollection is the final is a week from Saturday. Does that make sense? I'm happy about scheduling out of them. Saturday at what time? Nine a.m. Right. Yeah, maybe one of. I feel one thing we didn't like talk about very much is how to like do certain proofs about lists or something like that by induction or do some kind of equational reasoning like that is kind of something we missed yeah there is a whole course called uh, what do you call it reasoning about software but maybe we could have spent one lecture on talking about something just about that like how to prove things how would people take that class i think that's the future yeah you guys should take it it's a great course are so complicated you can't do the detail they're improving about real world examples and what the other one is using. So the NSA, National Security Agency, for things that steal visitors is absolutely dreadful. I'd spend a million dollars on testing to see whether I think they have to understand it. No, I don't remember the name. Yeah, so Intel must have lost about a billion dollars back when the billion dollars was worth something. Um, because they put out a version of the text. But there was like a bug. There was a bug in multiplication. And it's fairly, it's really multiplication. It's fairly small in the sense that when it was wrong, I think it was wrong by the rest of the time. <laughs> it's only within one percent that's basically catastrophic and uh some academic nerd who was working on uh, numerical codes noticed he wasn't getting the right answers and he tracked it down to a public in the hardware and intel you know you know how companies respond initially they said oh you know well you know we get one little tiny mistake in a few cases who cares and but the community was pretty relentless in the end. They had to replace all, all, all the, or at least offer to replace all of the four Pentium chips that had this flaw. And by the time they finished, I might understand it was a reasonable accounting of the system because it cost a million dollars. Yeah. There are, a, on a slightly different note, but kind of related, there is a, there are like a series of Haskell books by this guy called Richard Bird. Oh, I, I know. I've actually been. I don't oh, know. Okay. 
yeah his books are very interesting and they are very approachable but he puts a lot of focus on this kind of proofs like the, the, the one thing that actually the heard equation of reason lecture on on the subject and i was distressed by how complicated the reasoning if you want to reason about sort of the margin of what you can do with lazy evaluation and infinite things it gets very delicate and very complex and the, the, the my guess is that almost everything anybody writes you can prove the correctness of it for a more restricted set that didn't include infinite this and infinite that uh, or potentially infinite this and potentially infinite that uh, with simpler arguments but being able to reason that something behaves in a certain way on an infinite input is quite messy because what you in the end do is you do induction on the length of you, you prove it for all the finite streams that terminate in divergence at bottom because that approximates anything that follows and for certain properties you can, there's a continuity if you've taken some you know calculus courses or whatever you pass to the limit you can pass to the infinite uh, the upper bound of all of these se segments that terminate the bottom and say oh okay because my property had this structure the, the, the structure of the statement that i wrote down as a particular form, I know I can pass to the limit. Yeah, but it doesn't work that, with and this all the time. Like reverse, for example, does not. Like, like reverse or reverse is the identity of finite list. It's not on the line. Right. Yeah. And so it gets, it gets pretty delicate. But in fact, I think I was probably a little biased against infinite streams for that reason. But the thing is, it gives you sort of this flexible world that you don't want to go into deeply. But um, in fact, I'm sure Costa says a lot of others. You don't want to, if you try to prove the correctness of programs that manipulate infinite data structures, and you really worry about the boundary cases, it gets quite difficult, quite messy. But most of the time, you're just doing that sort of flexibility. I presume there's probably some approx, some world that's valid, that, that's correct, that only goes up to some finite size in, in certain cases that, that, that works for all, all, all the things that matter for your application. But that's that's granted that we're, we're in difficult territory now. I don't know any real world applications that are written in Haskell and use, use very many infinite trees and streams and so on. Although they may exist, and I just don't know about them. But certainly, I think they're going to emerge in the future. So I'll see you after. Yeah. Uh,